Today I'm going to show you how to screen print on a t-shirt using fabric paint and some supplies that I got at Dollar Tree. Screen printing is a great way to get nice crisp lines when putting a design onto a t-shirt using fabric paint. Fabric paint is usually longer lasting than HTV or heat transfer vinyl and it is also typically softer or not as rigid as heat transfer vinyl. You're not limited to just putting designs on t-shirts. Uh, this is a sample that I made on a piece of paper. This is one that I did on a wood sign using a different type of uh, screen uh, that I made. But today I'm just gonna show how to do this on a t-shirt. There are some inexpensive screen printing kits that you can get on Amazon, uh, typically starting under about $25. But if you want to give screen printing a try for just a few dollars, or possibly even using materials that you may already have, uh, check out this tutorial. So a couple things um, you could maybe use that you might have at home. This is a canvas frame that I had taken the canvas off of. Uh, you could try using one of these. If you have uh, embroidery hoops, you could try using these. The material that I'm using today is pretty thin and slippery, so it doesn't hold really tight in the embroidery frame. You also want to make sure that the material that you have is as big as your frame so that it's supported all the way around. On a previous project, I had bought this, like a window shade from Ikea, and you can see it's pretty transparent. The holes are a little bit bigger than, well, they're a lot bigger than the one that I'm using today. And you can actually see this was the one that I had made using that material, and you can see the texture, which isn't bad, but I found something that works a little bit better. So most of the supplies that we're gonna be using today were from Dollar Tree. Let's go over the supplies we'll need for this project. So first, you'll need a design. You can create your own, or the one I'll be doing today I got from Design Bundles. You'll need a item to do your screen on. I'm using a Bella Canvas 100% cotton t-shirt. A picture frame. This is from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using an 11 by 14 today, but I've also done this with an 8 by 10, so it just depends on the size of the screen print that you want to have. I'm using the fabric from this uh, children's dress-up skirt. You need a pair of sharp scissors or seam ripper. A masking tape. This is two-inch masking tape that I'm using today, but one inch is perfectly fine. You'll need a cutting machine. I'm going to use uh, my Silhouette Cameo 4, and you'll need an, a permanent adhesive vinyl. I'm using Oracal 651. A weeding tool. A transfer tape. I use the AT65 by R-Tape, which is a medium tack transfer tape. A vinyl scraper or squeegee. A brayer is optional, but it's very handy to have to smooth uh, your materials together really well. Fabric paint. I'm using the Folk Art fabric paint, and I have two colors, uh, Fawn and Engine Red. I'm gonna mix a little bit of red into the tan color to just make it a little bit richer. And I have a cup and a stir stick for mixing those. You'll need an iron or a heat press to both iron your fabric beforehand and to heat set the ink after your project is finished. Parchment paper to protect your iron from the paint when you heat set it. And then ideally you'll want some sort of um, cardboard or plastic sheet to put inside of your shirt or behind your fabric to protect in case the paint bleeds through. I'm going to use an old silhouette mat because it's a little bit sticky, but there's also these uh, plastic chopping mats you can get from Dollar Tree or you can just use a piece of cardboard. Whatever you use, just make sure it's completely smooth because you don't want any bumps to interfere when you apply your paint. All right, let's get started making our screen. So probably the most important part of the screen is the fabric that you need to screen it with. So I went looking for a thin fabric that was gonna hold up well to not stretch. You don't want it to be distorted. And I found this skirt. So this is the, just pretending, it's a dress up skirt found in the toy aisle usually and it is two layers of fabric and the elastic band. So you'll need a pair of sharp scissors or a seam ripper and just remove the elastic from the top and that will separate the two layers. So this one you can set aside and you can use it for another project. And then this is the fabric that we're gonna use for our silk screen. Uh, so just use a cool iron and press it until it's flat. If there's a few wrinkles, that's okay. You just don't want any really big wrinkles in there. And this, when it's all opened up, was 58 inches long and it's about 11 and a half inches wide. So you can actually get quite a few. I have at least two screens and I have enough for probably two more depending on the size of the frame that you're using. So once you have your fabric ready, it's time to make the screen. So remove the glass or plastic from the frame and any uh, paper or backing materials so that you have just the hollow empty frame. Then you'll lay out your fabric and place your frame on top. You just need your fabric to be the size of your frame. It can be a little bit bigger if you want, but the tape is gonna help 
uh, fill in some of that gap. So just cut your fabric the size of your frame. Now we're going to add the tape to make it a little bit easier to add to our frame. I don't think it really matters which side of the fabric is up. So you want to pull off strips of tape that are the length and the width of your fabric. It's going to completely cover the whole perimeter. We're going to tape it right to our work surface. Now we can peel this off of our surface and turn it over so that the sticky side is up and then place the frame. This is the front of the frame. This is the back and this has the flat side on it. So I'll do this as what will be the front of the frame. So I'm going to place this smooth side down and just center it so that the opening. You can see where this tape is. No screen printing is going to come through there. So just center your open part of your screen around your frame. And then start on one of the longer sides and just wrap the tape around the frame. Then we're going to rotate it and then lift it a little bit so that we can make sure that we're going to have it nice and snug. And I'll start in the middle here. And I'm just putting a little bit of tension against the frame with my, my fingers as I'm pulling the tape around. And just wrap it around. You can see how it's nice and snug there. And then I'll lift the side a little bit. And just pull it snug. And then rotate again and we'll do the two shorter sides. Here is our frame and you don't want to pull it too tight. You can see it's pulling in a little bit here, but depending on the frame, if it's um, a metal one, it could easily just collapse it. So just you just need it snug enough that your screen's going to be flat without misshaping your, your frame. So now we're going to get our design ready to cut and cut out our stencil. So go ahead and create your design or open the one that you are choosing to use. This again is from the design bundles. This was the Mega Bundle Volume 4, uh, Autumn Floral, and Number 30. I did modify it a little bit because these lines weren't connected to the pumpkin. Like here's a little space, but I just connected these so it looked a little more complete. I changed the size. I decided that I want to do a design that's about eight and a half inches wide and about eight and three quarter inches tall. I just drew this box to size it because as you see here, it's kind of strange. You can also tap the G on the keyboard to turn your grid lines on. And then I have my vinyl placed on my mat. My vinyl is about 10 and a half inches long. So I want to make sure that my design is within that. And then you don't want to put your design right up next to the edge. Like if you were going to be cutting this out as a decal, I would always place it as close to the edge as I could just to save as much. But you want to have a perimeter because we're going to remove this tan from the vinyl. Uh, so we want to have this perimeter so that we can tape it off to protect the ink from going through the screen where it's not supposed to. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. And then you can see here I, I filled it with a, a tan color and I made a box here just to kind of give an idea of what my design will look on the shirt, kind of like a little mock-up. Before I cut it, I need to flip it horizontally uh, because the design is going to be applied to the back of the screen and then turned over so that whenever it's applied, it will be cut correctly. For a design like this, it's not as important because there's no text, but if you have uh, words or something that you want to make sure that it shows correctly, make sure you flip it horizontally. So I'm going to apply my vinyl to my mat. You go ahead and load it in the machine and go to send. Um, you can use the preset cuttings if you want. I usually set my own. Make sure you have it set to cut. I'm using the auto blade for the Cameo 4. You can see all of the lines that are going to be cut here are in red. So this is set to cut. So for vinyl, I do a blade of one, force of 10, one pass, line segment overcut turned on. That'll help give it a nice clean cut. And I'm going to leave the speed at four just because there's some intricate details here. I want to make sure that they all get cut out well. Uh, down here, my machine says unavailable because I haven't plugged it into my computer. So I will do that. Now it is ready. I can send to cut.
So it finished cutting. So you want to grab a little corner and make sure that it cut all the way through. And it did, so now we can just unload it. This design was certainly ambitious to uh, try out for screen printing, but we're gonna go for it. Okay, so I'm going to now weed out the parts of the vinyl that I don't want so that we have our stencil. And so remember, we want the paint to be the shape, so we're not gonna be weeding like we would a normal decal. We want to weed out the negative space. So I'm gonna leave the vinyl on the mat, and I'm gonna start with a spot that I know for sure needs to come out. And then as I work my way around, I'll just keep looking back at the image and just alternating between the parts that I know need to be weeded and the parts that don't. So I just have a few more pieces to weed out here, uh, but I wanted to show, this is what I mean um, by starting out and then working your way in. So we have this line that we removed where you can see the blue, and then we have, this is gonna be white, and then I'll remove this circle here, and then this is gonna stay white. Um, so if you just alternate and work one row at a time, it's a lot easier to figure out which parts need to be weeded out and which parts need to be left in there. I can remove it from the mat. So I'll turn the mat over and peel it off of the vinyl. And then I wanna leave about a half an inch to an inch around the whole perimeter. I So normally if I were cutting out a vinyl decal, I would probably cut this out and save it so I can reuse it because I save scraps. But in this design, since they're gonna be squeegeeing all the way across, we wanna make sure that we have a complete perimeter of vinyl around the whole design. There we go. And now I can see that it's gonna fit inside my design, so I'm gonna apply my transfer tape. And then you can also use the brayer on this to make sure it's fully adhered, especially since there were some little pieces. So like these little pieces here, we wanna make sure that they get transferred with the transfer tape. But again, if they came out and it didn't make it, then it's okay, the design would still look good not having them in there. So when we screen print, we want the flat part down. So that means we want our design to be adhered to the top, the raised part of our screen. So I don't wanna be pushing down on our screen so I have, uh, this is just a box, you could use cardboard, anything that's gonna raise, that's gonna be taller than the thickness of the screen. And I can just set this on top of here. And now when I apply the stencil, I'm gonna be pressing right on the box instead of um, pressing on the screen itself. So I want to make sure that any of the parts where the screen printing is gonna go through is not covered up by the tape because this tape will prevent the ink from also going through. So it's okay if the tape overlaps um, part of the vinyl, just not the design part. So this is where we want our design. I can go ahead and remove the paper backing. And just keeping an eye, making sure that I don't lose any of those little vinyl bits. See like this one's starting to lift. I'll just press it down a little bit. You can also place your squeegee down and fold the paper back over it and then peel off and that will help hold the vinyl down onto the transfer tape. All right, and now just center it. And then we're gonna use the squeegee and smooth it down. So now what we're doing is we're adhering the vinyl to our screen. And turn it over and then continue pressing it on to make sure it's really secured on there. And then this is another good place for the brayer. Now we can remove the transfer tape and I'm gonna use the box again. So 
keeping a close eye, making sure none of the vinyl comes up off of the screen. And then again, just making sure it's really adhered. If there's any parts where it's not, then the, the paint could seep through and then it, you won't have nice crisp lines. And now we we're gonna put some more tape. So the vinyl, once it's applied, it will actually cure over time. Uh, so if you want to be extra secure, you can actually wait about a day or two so that the vinyl um, adhesive really bonds to the screen. Or you could uh, set it in the sun for a little bit, just warm it up a little bit so that it can fully adhere. Okay, so here is our screen. Yeah, I'm going to mix up my paint. And then we'll screen print. So the amount of paint you need depends on the size of your image that you're going to be screen printing. You want to be able to cover the whole top and we're going to pull it down so we need enough to coat this whole part of the design. And it, since I'm mixing colors I'm going to make a little bit extra because I don't want to run out. It says to shake the paint well and I had just used this recently so I've already shaken it and I'm going to use quite a bit of this here. These are two ounce bottles and this was probably about three quarter full when I started. There's a little bit left in here, uh, but I got about know, half inch in my container. And I'm going to add a little bit of red. I can always add more. And that's pretty close. It is going to be a little bit darker as it dries. And then I can also check it out. So this is my shirt and my paint. So I think this looks pretty good. Now it's time to prepare our shirt. If you have any big wrinkles, you'll want to pre-press the shirt because uh, if your shirt has a wrinkle in it and the paint goes over it, then you're gonna have a wrinkle in your design. So this paint is pretty thick. It probably wouldn't bleed through, but just in case, I'm gonna put a piece of plastic inside. And this is one of my silhouette, my old silhouette mats. It's a little bit sticky. So that will do two things. One, it'll help protect the shirt inside. And two, the sticky will help hold the shirt in place while I'm uh, screen printing. So I'm going to roll this up so it doesn't stick all the way inside and just insert it in the shirt, open it up and it's about right here. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Let's see, centered. You don't want to stretch the shirt to go across because then after you screen print and you release it, it will, it will also wrinkle. So you just want it on there nice and normal. And then I'm going to lint roll it. Okay. I want to place it a couple inches down from the neck. So you can measure down if you want. We had about two inches. And then it's about another inch down to the design. So this will actually be up about an inch. So we'll put this up here. The stencil is nice and even on our shirt. I have my paint here. So we got the paint on there. So as we squeegee this down, I wanna make sure I hold this in place uh, because this is a lightweight screen. Uh, if it were, you know, a real screen, it's, it's a little more sturdy. So this one, we just have to be a little extra careful and I'm gonna place the squeegee on the top. So I'm just gonna drag it across. And now that I know I have all this covered, I can go back and give it a little more pressure, squeegeeing the paint through the stencil. And it is, it's a little hard to tell 
if it went all the way through. You don't want to keep just smushing it through, but you do want to make sure you cover all of it. So you want to avoid having a big line uh, through part of the stencil because when you peel it up, you'll have excess paint there. Make sure you don't have any paint on your hands. And we're going to carefully pull up the stencil. I think it needs a little more scraping. Well, let's see how it went. There's our design. I'm going to let this dry before I take the silhouette mat out. There's a little bit of shadowing, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to let this sit uh, 24 hours and then we'll heat set it. All right, my shirt has been drying for 24 hours. Uh, it was actually pretty dry within about an hour, but I just wanted to follow the directions on the paint and be careful. Um, so I'm just going to remove the mat that I was using in there. And then now I'm gonna heat set the paint. So I have my ironing board here. I just shook out the shirt so I don't have any wrinkles directly under the, where the paint is. I'm gonna cover it with a piece of parchment paper. And I have my iron set to the cotton setting. I don't ever keep water in here. If I use water uh, for ironing, I keep it in a separate spray bottle. That way I don't accidentally get water if I was doing this, using this for a quick heat transfer um, or for this, you don't want steam in most craft projects. So, And then I'm just gonna press it on for about five seconds and then move it to the next spot for about five seconds. And then again, and then the last bit here. And I'm gonna do that about three times over each uh, painted area without, uh, we don't want to scorch the shirt. And there it is. So there is our screen printed with fabric paint design onto a shirt. Overall, I think it looks really good. Um, you can see where there's some, some shadowing because I lifted it up, but I think it's all right. So overall, I would say for just a one-off shirt or just a design that you don't want to use heat transfer on or you need a color that you don't have heat transfer for, I think it works pretty well. I'll be trying it again. Mm -hmm.